Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy Boss Mac back to gaming.com and for today's video we have the Asus ROG Strix X299e gaming motherboard and this is coming up our string of X299 motherboard reviews and this is the first ROG Strix board that we were taking a look at and I think this is the only ROG Strix board uh, that will be hitting our way so anyways this is part of the ROG family basically what Asus did is they split up the ROG mainline which is the for the X299 it's the Rampage series and then we have the ROG Strix we talked about the difference between both series uh, that the ROG Strix is more mainstream and the flagship ROG the non Strix one is the really high-end series for the dedicated uh, extreme gamer with a lot of with lots of money and stuff like that but you do get back up more features than the ROG Strix line so anyways moving right along this is the motherboard right here the ROG Strix X299 eGaming that's a lot of word once again uh, for the model yes so we're gonna move on first to our unboxing and yes we're gonna put aside the motherboard which is right here. So I'm gonna put this aside so we can take a look at what's inside the content of the package. So I'm just gonna place it right over here. I'm gonna do a quick adjustment on the camera. So here we have the ROG Strix X299 eGaming package. So we'll take a look at what's inside. So once again, we already removed the motherboard as we've seen earlier and here's what's inside so this basically doesn't have anything this is just a spacer to put the ROG logo once you open it because the ROG mainline boards have a really flat flashy packaging the one where you flip it up and got the ROG symbol right there stuff like that so anyways we have we take out the layer for the motherboard and this is where we get the accessory compartment and let's start off with the metal segment where we have a door hanger game on you shall not pass and game up you may enter oh, okay it's like an on up switch symbol anyways moving right along we have the cable uh cable mod voucher 20 percent off I'm gonna flash that right there print screen if you want or oh, i mean screenshot if you want and we have the uh, mounting screws for the M2 M2 devices we have the installation disc right there is the sticker in here no it's not oh it is here but not inside the case there are the ROG logo stickers we have the cable labels or yeah it says it's a it's uh, it's cable labels but you don't really get any naming so you pretty much have to write up uh, write down on the the labels yourself with silver markers stuff like that and we have the manual which is like security tucked in so yeah sorry about that poor manual yes yeah, so there you have the manual for the ROG Strix X299 so we'll check uh, on this side first so open that up and we have, I think this is uh, RGB white headers, extension cables. They have one, two, two pairs of SATA cables that are done in black and no, they are not sleeved. And we have the IO plate, I mean the IO shield right here. So moving we'll right along, let's put those to the side and there's a bit right here. We get probes. Thermal sensors right there which connect to the built-in motherboard headers so you can monitor the board temperatures whatever uh, whatever place you can put that on and on this side we have the Wi-Fi antenna Wi-Fi and Bluetooth yes this motherboard does include built-in uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth you don't need to connect a daughter card to make that work so we have the M.2 vertical riser this motherboard as I'll show you later as a nifty way of placing another M2 device on the board we have a typical uh, SATA bridge this is an SLI HB I mean an SLI HB bridge so it's the normal kind it's not the stylized kind you get from the 
the app I mean the not the aftermarket the ones they do sell their own separate packaging so you have a quick connector right here this is for your front panel connector and we have another pair of screw and socket for your M2 device we have RGB header extension cables and another a uh, bunch of zip ties and I think that is it for the ROG Strix X299 e gaming bundle so I'm gonna clean this up so here we have the ROG Strix X299 e gaming motherboard in the flesh and so let's uh, uh, let's get down to business and let's talk about the motherboard itself. So first off, it is done in the new style of the ROG Strix. Basically, it's done in uh, uh, gray on black, which is a very neutral theme, very easy to work with if you're working with a, a build that requires uh, color combinations and you want a neutral motherboard just so it blends in with any build that will work with uh, white and black, white and gray, white and red. It's a really easy motherboard, I mean a color team to work with. So Asus has been doing that I think for the past two releases with uh, Rampage 5 uh, Edition 10. It was also done in all black. So for this one it's got uh, PCB prints done in white, well fine pinstripes over there. It breaks up the motherboard and uh, it's a very common uh, characteristic for uh, Asus, uh, Asus motherboards, ROG motherboards would be a really to look really busy on the component side. So for this one, this is an X299 motherboard. It is a, uh, it will support uh, Intel KB Lake X and Intel Skylake X processors. Uh, do note that if you're using uh, Intel KB Lake X, the i5 and the i7 ones, you can only use dual channel memory configurations on this side. But if you're using the Skylake X models, which is the Core i7 and the Core i9s, you can work with quad channel memory and you can populate all these slots. So moving right along, we have a heatsink over here and the IO shroud right here. So the power connectors for the ATX 12 volt are over at this side, at the top is right above the heat safe so you you can have you have actually you have a four an eight pin and a uh, ATX 12 volt right here which is only a four pin connector you can actually use this without the other one but of course if you're overclocking and you need that power you will need to work uh, with both of those so the fan headers are over here so you have the fan header and optional fan if you're using an AIO you can use these connectors over here so the ATX 24 pin connector is over at this side so raise a bit higher so this I think this is the first time I've seen a connector uh, this height uh, it's actually pretty nice I think if you got a case with drop it holes over at this end uh, it's really it makes it really easy to work with to route over there and then just leave the, the other grommet hole at this side and just loop those connectors over lower for like SATA cables whatever it really depends on your case so over this end and I think we need to like zoom in so I'm just gonna hold this and we have the vertical M2 slot right here so again I'm showing you there is a, a bracket included which you would need to screw at these two holes to secure it in place and then just connect your M2 slot it will connect it vertically at this end so you also get a USB 3.1 header at this side this is this little slot right here and you get a angled USB 3.0 front panel connector and you get a total of eight SATA 3 slots over at this end they're all facing uh, sideways for cleaner look and we have the PCH heatsink which actually connects to to the which and covers up the other M2 slot on this motherboard, and the good thing about this is it does serve as a heatsink. It's become a bit normal for motherboard these days to actually uh, like include uh, heatsinks for M2 devices. So personal experience, uh, I think I've talked about it many times before in, uh, in my previous videos. There's if your M2 storage, like an SSD, heats up, it would crash your system. So actually, uh, I'm using a system that has that configuration right now. It's an older, 
uh, Z97 system, so it doesn't doesn't take into account the the the, the lessons that we've learned throughout the, these uh, recent years. So this one is really nifty feature. It's not uh, it's not that thick. I will show you guys right there. Not that thick. I think it's adequate adequate cooling since it's connected over here. You need to unscrew three screws to take this off. So anyways, we have three PCIe slots. Do take note that a lot of the graphics card makers right now, like you're using NVIDIA, they only support SLI, dual card SLI for AMD, it's the same case. So not a lot of boards are actually including like connect, I mean, X16 slots like five or four so this is uh, this is the standard right now. They they could uh, they could actually make it work with more, but since Nvidia themselves and AMD themselves do not support that kind of configuration, only for like benchmarks if you're using uh, like four 1080 Ti's for three D mark benchmarking, that would work. But for games, uh, they they turned it up at the driver level. Anyways, this is using a uh, Supreme FX. They actually stopped numbering the Supreme FX. They're actually using a something named a. Let me get my notes over here. They're actually using something called a audio coding S1220A. So from what I've seen from the other uh, ROG implementations, basically like another ALC1220, just amplified with whatever technology they have. They are actually using some nifty. Uh, what do you call this? Components. So I think these one are gold Nietzsche clan capacitors over at the audio area. It's still separated, as you can see. They're the audio area, the audio PCB area is separated from the rest of the motherboard. motherboard. Like it's become practice now. Just keeping it isolated, just remove the interference whatsoever. Everyone is also putting shrouds on this side. It connects to the main IO area. And we got a couple of fat headers. Actually, AIO pump is right here. So I just noticed that. So I'm, I'm used to connecting my AIO over here. So it's supposedly it's over here. It makes it really hard to route. Anyways, going back to aesthetics, this is glass over here. So let me get give you a few angles. There's so there's a mirror backing on this, and it's also illuminated. So I'm not going to be able to show you the illumination. I have a separate video on that, the illumination feature of this motherboard. So the ROG Strix X299E Gaming has a pair of lights. It doesn't have uh, ambient light at the, uh, the back. So what you get is one on this heat sink and the other one is on this. And they are both, well I mean this one is using the more fluid lighting. The one you see on the Trident CRGB, pretty similar to that. And this one is just simple RGB lighting would change and you can configure that with uh, the Asus Aura software and there's also RGB headers over here and here and here. There's a debug display over here and then they actually like did away with the reset button because it only has a power button for like DIY troubleshooting stuff like that. So anyways that's pretty much it for this motherboard for special features you do get a built-in Wi-Fi AC and Bluetooth module over here. The antenna is connected. These are USB 3.1 Gen 1 and these are USB 3.1 Gen 2. So you get a Type-C right there. It is not a Thunderbolt port and rather it's just USB 3.1 Gen 2. And you get the bias reset over here and pair up legacy USB 2.0 connectors like all their devices for peripheral stuff like that. And yes, that is pretty much it. So for those looking for a U.2 connector, uh, I think the Rampage 6 would have those. Uh, this one, it does not. The, the Prime that we've taken a look at, I think it has one. Uh, I'm not, yeah, I'm, I clearly don't remember right now. It's been uh, a couple of weeks since I last checked it out and I will return that to Asus. And yes. So, how do I feel about this motherboard? Basically, this is actually cheaper than the X299 Prime. So, if you're like opting for a simple gaming motherboard, and I, I mean, when I say simple, I, 
I am by no means downplaying the cost of an X299 platform. Like, if you just want to game at an X299 platform, there are a bunch of options out there. But for those loyal to Asus, those wanting a neutral motherboard, because like the Prime is a black and white uh, combination of colors. This one is more gray on black, and you got other board companies uh, that are offering their own combination of colors. I uh, mentioned a lot of variation for MSI. Gigabyte also has a black theme going on, but the the price on those you and the feature combination you have to weigh those in but if you're a really big fan of aces and you just want that rog swag basically a lot of people are just riding on that rog swag they i don't know they love it so if you're a fan of rogs rog they're offering the rog Strix more for more mainstream purposes you do get you get everything from the X299 platform support for the Core i7s and the Core i9 Skylake processors up to 10 cores and the upcoming ones uh, coming in later in the year or maybe next year the eight, the 16 core, 18 core, Core i7-7980 XE and probably they're planning to release anything after that they might still use this platform so there you go this is the ROG Strix X299 e gaming uh, if you're asking me if you want a definitive answer if this is a good board or not uh, if, like I said if you're a fan of Asus you want their you just you're heavily dependent on their quality and yeah this is definitely an easy board to go with because one uh it's practically cheaper than the x299 prime but if you're planning to wait out for the rampage 6 apex the rampage 6 extreme those are uh, i'm always telling you right now those are going to be hella expensive so this is definitely your gaming board to go to if you just want an x299 gaming platform and yeah this is a different discussion you want to talk about why would you need an x299 uh, platform like in a core i7 6 core whatever to go with that it's a different, different discussion but for the board itself it's got a lot of features that you want and definitely something to look out for is the uh, the built-in Wi-Fi it does have uh, a combination the uh, I'm not sure it can team with I don't know I'm not sure if it's a Pretty sure it's not a killer, so yeah, I'm not sure if Asus is including a teaming software with this one, like a network management, because some of the gaming boards do include that. So for this one, uh, definitely I will include everything in the written review. So this has been your boy Boss Mac uh, for the ROG Strix X299 e Gaming. Uh, I will include the link to our full review in the description. If you are watching this in the future, the review link is already in the description. So if you want to see more videos like this one, don't forget to like the video, comment the video, and subscribe. Peace.